Hi, good evening to all. Thanks to the organizer who has given me the opportunity to be here. My topic of presentation is Remnant Preservation ACL Reconstruction. Is it is worth doing? Then, before doing the arthroscopic procedure, we put the arthroscope inside the knee joint. We can see here there is complete tear of the anterior cruciate ligament, both AM and PL bundle from the femoral side. And there is entire remnant of ACL fiber, which is bridging from femur to TBI is present. So the question definitely comes in the mind whether to preserve it or resect it during the ACL reconstruction. The purpose of this study were to introduce our ACL remnant preservation technique that preserve the ACL remnant while reconstructed and to examine its clinical outcome. Remnant preservation ACL reconstruction achieve better knee stability and clinical outcome with its potential advantage of prom promoting faster graft revascularization and maturation. Crane who classify the remnant of the ACL fiber into four types. Type one where the remnant is attached to the PCL present in 38% of cases. Type 2, where the remnant is attached to the uh, notch of the uh, knee, present in 12% of cases. And type 3, where the remnant is attached to the lateral wall of the femoral condyle, present in 12% of cases. And type 4, where there is hardly any remnant tissue visible inside the knee joint. The merit of ACL remnant preservation is it is performed under arthroscopic procedure. It avoids resection of the ACL remnant. It preserves the neural element and the mechanoreceptors. It provides a favorable influence on the vascularity and re of the graft. The indications, our goal is always to preserve remnant of the ACL fiber as much as possible. When the continuity of the fiber from the TBR to the femur is intact, when the ACL is scared from the TBR to the roof of the notch of the PCL, we also try to always keep a reasonable size a stump on the TBR. Surgical technique, we have seen just in the previous lecture. Uh, before ACL reconstruction, we do the routine diagnostic arthroscopy to exclude any meniscal tear, chondral lesion, and loose body. The status of each ACL remnant was assessed and decided whether ACL reconstruction could be performed using a remnant preserving technique or not. And femoral preparation. We used radiofrequency probe, curate and sever to identify the bony landmark on the femoral condyle. Initially, we used the jig, but nowadays we are using freehand technique. See the micro fracture all and which is aimed at uh, uh, in between at the center of AM and PL bundle, the punch with the hammer, then drill uh, with a 2.4 mm guide wire, then initial with 4.5 mm drill width, and then finally according drill width according to the size of the graft. And this is the picture uh, we have taken during the surgery. Uh, this is the tunnel we have created on the femur. Then TVL tunnel creation. We use the probe to protect the ACL remnant fiber to prevent its injury. And we use the radio frequency probe to mark on the TVR for TBL jig placement with reference to anterior horn of the lateral meniscus, just I have, uh, we have seen in the previous lecture. Then put the jig over there and drill it according to the size of the graft till not perforating the subcondral bone. The final drilling will be made with the hand so that to prevent the rupture of the TBL remnant footprint. Then we insert the probe inside the tunnel on the tibia then use 11 number scalpel to create a mid bundle 
window between AM and PL. Then we use either straight artery forceps or probe to separate both the AM and PL one. Here we have used the two diagnostic probe to separate both the PM and AL bundle till we can see the dilator inside the TVL tunnel. Yeah. This is the final picture of both the TVL uh, and the femoral tunnel. You can see here. Graft passes and its fixation. We used semi tendinous quadruple graft and uh, femoral fixation with continuous loop endometer and TVL fixation with H equated bio screw two size larger than the graft diameter. And Here we can see the tension on the graft. It is well tensed and how nicely the remnant fiber, which is covering the newly reconstructed ACL from tibia to the femur. Then finally, we check the graft impingement during complete knee extension and flexion. You can see here during the extension, there is no any graft impingement in the roof. So the post-operative management, according to the standard protocol, like range of motion, isometric muscle and closed kinetic chain exercise, we are allowed from the first post-operative day, full weight wearing from second week, jumping, landing, twisting and cutting exercise were allowed at four months. Return to a sports depending on the process of rehabilitation and type of a sports after 8 to 12 months. The post operative clinical evaluation, according to objective evaluation uh, test like joint stability at final follow up by performing Lackman test, pivot shift test, manual maximum displacement test. Subjective evaluation included time from surgery to return to a sports activity. This remnant preservation technique demonstrated prevention of anterior laxity, pro safety function, early graft vascularization and reduces re-rupture of the graft and early returns of sports activity. Although longer follow-up period is necessary before a definitive conclusion can be reached. The discussion, so the question definitely comes in the mind those who are doing the surgery. So how does one treat the remnant of the ACL? In a review article, search from PubMed with keywords ACL remnant from 2000 to 2019, the search hits 165 titles. The paper in Asia Pacific Journal of Sports Medicine published in 2017 by M. Takis, anterior cruciate ligament remnant and its value for preservation concluded remnant preserving ACL reconstruction has higher potential for early healing, superior functional recovery, earlier returns of to sports and lower occurrence of re-injury, although the scientific evidence to support the potential is not yet sufficient. Another article from orthopedic surgery from at all, remnant preservation technique versus standard technique from for anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction, a meta-analysis of randomized control trial, trial conclude based on the current literature using the remnant preserving technique showed a better clinical outcome than using the standard technique for patient undergoing primary ACL reconstruction with respect to lysome score and side to side difference. The another recent article in Biomed Research International is remnant preservation is in anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction superior to the standard technique, a systemic review and meta-analysis conclude that equivalent or superior outcome of the post-operative knee stability and clinical score were observed in patient undergoing remnant preserving ACL reconstruction compared with those undergoing a standard ACL reconstruction. There was no significant difference in the rate of total complication between both the group. So hence 
remnant preservation it helps to improve the vascularization of the graft it helps uh, for proprioception there is no increase in delay uh, in cyclops lesion less tibial tunnel widening shorter surgery time there is no clinical evidence yet but it makes sense to preserve as much as remnant fiber to preserve thank you mm -hmm.